This question is about a 60-year-old right-handed male who was employed, came to emergency with sudden onset of inability to write, which is agraphia, inability to calculate a calculia or dial telephone numbers. And he came to emergency ward the same day. He is not diabetic, not hypertensive. Patient is, alco patient is alcoholic and drinks four beers per week, smokes five to six cigarettes per day for 30 years. On examination, so this history he is um, suggesting it could be a stroke, an ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke. On examination, pulse rate is 90, BP 150 by 100, not too high, but still high, alert and oriented. There is no loss of uh, vision. That's important. There is no loss of vision. Field of vision is entirely normal. His motor and sensory system showed no abnormality. That's also very important. So CT brain showed ischemic infarct in the left hemisphere. That's also a very good clue. Which of the following lobe of the brain is likely to have an infarct? So um, let's look at all the options. If it would be a frontal lobe infarct, then the patient should have muscle weakness on the opposite side of the body where the infarct is. Um, in the at least on one side of the body, there should be a muscle weakness. There is no muscle weakness. And frontal lobe infarcts involve the thinking and behavior. The patients would be less empathetic and careless and personality issues would be seen in frontal lobe infarcts. Urinary incontinence is also very commonly seen in frontal lobe infarcts. And if there is any language deficit in frontal lobe infarcts, it is Broca's called Broca's aphasia. It is basically a motor aphasia where sensory is receiving, motor is giving, right? So motor aphasia, the patients will not be able to speak in a very clear or comprehensive way, but they'll still be able to understand what other people are saying. But what they say would not make much sense. So let us look at the next option. This patient does not have all these symptoms, so it's not a frontal lobe infarct. The next option is temporal lobe. So temporal lobe infarcts are characterized by an, an, an aphasia called temporal aphasia. This also called Wernicke's aphasia, which is a sensory aphasia. These are seen in temporal lobe infarcts. Also, a little memory and emotional disturbances might be seen. But in this sensory aphasia, patients will not be able to comprehend properly what other people are saying. So uh, they, will, they will speak, but they will not be able to uh, correlate with what other people are saying. So it's actually a comprehensive aphasia. The next option is parietal lobe infarct. So this is the option answered in our question because uh, there is a syndrome called Gerstmann syndrome. You have to remember this, there is no other way. So Gerstmann syndrome is characterized by a tetrad of agraphia, acalculia. These two are seen in our patient as well. Finger agnosia. So they'll not be able to recognize their fingers left-right disorientation. So the point here is patients who have an infarct in the dominant parietal lobe. So in left-handed people, it is right-sided lobe. In right-handed people, it is left parietal lobe. So left parietal lobe infarcts. These tetrads are not seen in all patients who have an infarct in the left parietal lobe. Rather, one or two might be seen or three might be seen. Very rarely the tetrad presents itself with all the four symptoms. In our patient, there is only agraphia and acalculia. So the last option is occipital. Occipital lobe infarcts are characterized by vision abnormalities based on the location of the infarcts. Different lobes, different fields of vision might be involved, but there would definitely be a vision abnormality. Mm -hmm.